Hello and welcome everyone. Today I'm going to go through 2024 Oscar predictions as well as give you some added value as to what I would have both nominated and also what I would have awarded had I had any say in the matter of things. Starting at the top, we have actor in a leading role. And I think this one's going to go to Killian Murphy. He seems like the odds on favorite. And I do think that Oppenheimer is going to be heavily awarded. However, my nominations would differ pretty significantly. And I'm going to give you five nominations. Some of them are going to be the same. Um, even some of the the categories, you're going to see the exact same. Especially if it's something I'm not super duper passionate about. But actor in a leading role, I definitely am. I would award Paul Giamatti for his performance in The Holdovers. I think Leo's performance in Killers of the Flower Moon was the second best. I don't know how it didn't get nominated. Killian Murphy, I thought, was the third best. Joaquin Phoenix in, wait for it, Bo is Afraid, I thought, was fourth best actor uh, in a leading role. And Barry Keegan of Saltburn fame, I thought, to round out the top five and and while we're here and while we're all excited why don't you hit subscribe like and comment your thoughts on who you think's gonna win and who you think maybe got snubbed should have got nominated now we're gonna go actor in supporting role we got american fiction getting some love robert de niro getting some love rightfully robert downey jr getting love ryan gosling getting some hate actually just for getting awarded and mark ruffalo who do I think is going to win? I think RDJ is going to win. Like I said, kind of going with the Oppenheimer love. I think they're going to probably, it, they are going to be the everything, everywhere, all at once of this year. And I agree with that. I would award it to RDJ myself. I thought Mark Ruffalo was second best. It's fantastic. Robert De Niro also deserved to get nominated. He was third best. Someone who I want to give some love to is Dominic Sessa of The Holdovers. You can definitely argue and debate whether you thought his performance was one of the best of the year. I will hear your argument, but this was this kid's literal first role. And I thought he nailed it. The story's really cool. I don't know. I, I feel like that would have been a narrative that the Oscars would have loved. And then fifth, whether he's actually eligible for this or not, I have to give some love to Glenn Howerton, always sunny fame in Blackberry. He rocked that role. And I, I do think it it deserves recognition. Then we're going to actress in a leading role. Nyad admittedly and i want to say this now some films that i have not watched yet i'm also i'm going to put my letterbox 2023 ranked list in the pinned comment down below it'll probably be there either the day or a couple days after i upload this everything ranked you'll see what i saw and what i haven't seen Nyad is not a film that i've seen so i'm gonna abstain from whether that is rightfully nominated, what have you. Some other notable omissions. I haven't seen Ferrari. I haven't seen Godzilla minus one. I haven't seen The Boy and the Heron. And I haven't seen All of Us Strangers. There's some other nominated films that I haven't seen. As we come across those, I'll let you know. Actress in a leading role. Who do I think will win? Whew. This is tough. I do think that Lily Gladstone will win. I think Killers of the Flower Moon is going to get a decent amount of love, kind of of the scraps left over from what Oppenheimer doesn't kind of eat up. And really the top three of this, I think is an absolute toss up for who I think deserves to win. So I'm saying Lily Gladstone will win actress in a leading role, who I would award the victory would be Emma Stone in Poor Things. I think Lily Gladstone was second best by a hair. And depending on which side of the bed I wake up on, I could give it to her. And same goes for 
our other top three actress, Sandra Hewler of Anatomy of a Fall was absolutely dynamite in that film. Of those three, if it goes to any of those three, I'm not batting an eye. If it goes to, and I don't know how uh, Nyad was, or I did see Maestro, if it went to those two, I would be slightly disappointed. But of my nominations, these are the two that I would actually uh, replace. Natalie Portman in May-December was amazing, and Greta Lee in Past Lives was also really good, and I'm kind of surprised to not see them nominated. We're going to go to Actress in a Supporting Role. This one, I think, is an absolute slam dunk. Uh, if you're kind of a, a degenerate gambler, um, first and foremost, no judgment here. I put 2.2K on numerous Oscar bets, so I got some skin in the game. But Devine Joy Randolph will win this. And if there's not, we riot. I think it's pretty cut and dry. I didn't see the color purple, obviously didn't see Nyad. Devine Joy is odds-on favorite and also who I would award it to. Everyone except for Devine and Emily Blunt are replaced on my list and going in order of like how I would rank it, I'd go Devine, then very solid margin, Julianne Moore in May, December. I thought she was really great in that. Patty Lapone from Bo is Afraid. Sandra Hewler, this time for the zone of interest. And then rounding out the top five, Emily Blunt. Animated feature film. I haven't seen any of these outside Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Take it for what you will. I think The Boy and the Heron has gotten a lot of a lot of hype. And I honestly don't think that the Academy Award Awards members are going to want to award Across the Spider-Verse, def- despite the fact that it was pretty damn good. So I think The Boy and the Heron there. Like I was saying with the animated feature, Elemental... I. I could get some love. I, I really just think like the boy and the heron seems like the type of movie that they would award. And I think Elemental and Spider-Man, even if you think they're better, might not get love just because of the perception of what type of movie that is. Going to cinematography, I haven't seen El Condi, but I have seen Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Poor Things. Um, what I want to say is that either production design or cinematography needs to win for poor things because that's you know part of the film is in black and white but it's still the most beautiful film of the bunch what i think is going to happen here is this might be an award that goes to killers of the flower moon just to try to show it some love and things like this that are kind of a toss-up i i want to lean oppenheimer as well I, I want to. See, I know the split is going to be the majority of the films are going to go to Oppenheimer, and then the bigger majority Oppenheimer, and then Killers of the Flower Moon. I mean, they're going to look for ways to give ki- Killers some flowers, uh, though that that might be in a different award. So I'll just say Oppenheimer here, even though I don't think it's technically the best. I personally think it's poor things Oppenheimer. Killers, Maestro, and then maybe Saltburn just to throw it in there. Honestly, some of the best cinematography I do think comes from some of the foreign films. Perfect Days was really good, but also Monster was really good. My personal preference, I think I would put those over Maestro and my Saltburn, uh, but just kind of running with their list. That's how I would rank the five. Costume, design, I would predict Barbie will win this. My ranking for costume design, I would go Poor Things, Napoleon, Barbie, Killers, Oppenheimer. All had really good costumes. I just think Poor Things, especially, uh, you know, Emma Stone, looked really, really good in Poor Things, as did Willem Dafoe and Mark Ruffalo, everyone. Directing Scorsese, I believe will win. That's my prediction. Who I would give it to, also Scorsese. Though I think there's a really good argument to go towards Yorgos Lanthimos to get that performance out of Emma Watson. Not Emma Watson, Emma Stone. 
was tremendous. Mark Ruffalo. Then you tie into that the beautiful look of the film. I would go. I would go him. I think there's more positives, more edges you could give Yorgos over Scorsese, but it it's a feel. This one feels good to give it to Scorsese. Uh, my rankings: Scorsese, Lanthimos, Nolan, Triet, Anatomy of a Fall, and then Alexander Payne. I think should have got uh, nominated for directing documentary. I didn't see any of these. I have no idea. Your guess is as good as mine. Documentary short film, no idea. Film editing. This one should be cut and dry. Uh, this is this like actress in a supporting role i feel the strongest that it's gonna go to oppenheimer and i would give it to oppenheimer it was clearly the best editing and then outside of that i don't have really very strong kind of feelings on ranking outside of that international film i've seen perfect day society of the snow and the zone of interest haven't seen io capitano or the teacher's lounge so I can't speak to the greatness of those films. I'm sure they are really good. Uh, my ranking would be, and this is kind of cheating, because I think this film specifically didn't want to be considered for this, but I think you just should because it's an international film and it's clearly the best. Anatomy of the Fall, of a fall, is the best international film the Zone of Interest is the one that I think, not think, I know is going to win International Feature Film. It's the only one that is nominated for International and also Best Picture. So it um, doesn't take a, a brain scientist to figure that one out. Monster is my third best. Perfect Days, very close with Monster, is my fourth best. And then Absolute Wild Card. Above Society of the Snow when evil lurks for moi. Makeup and hair. Kind of surprised to see Barbie wasn't on this list. But poor things will win that, I believe. And that's the one that I think is the best. Maestro, pretty damn good makeup on Bradley Cooper. So, you know, putting that nose on, pretty impressive. Oppenheimer. Well, I think Killers of the Flower Moon should go because... You look, I mean, Leo looks completely different in that. Then Barbie, then Oppenheimer for hair and makeup. My ranking music, I am terrible. I can't remember these to save my life. So, I well, I will say music original score, Poor Things was the most unique, and I can actually remember that. Music original score, I'm just Ken. I mean, that's another one. It's very memorable. That would be my best recommendation for that. Best picture. Who's going to win it? Oppenheimer. Clearly, it's going to go to Oppenheimer. I think everyone would be shocked if Oppenheimer didn't win that. My rankings is very different. I have three films that aren't nominated on my list. But I would go Oppenheimer 1, myself, Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, The Zone of Interest, The Killer by David Fincher, Past Lives, Poor Things, Monster, Bo is Afraid at number 10. Argue me about how much you hate Bo is Afraid, and I will tell you, you are wrong. Production design, like I said, Poor Things should, in my mind, at least win either production design or cinematography. I can see it winning one of the two. It probably won't. Personally, I would go it for both. <sighs> I don't know if they're going to give Barbie love here, y'all. I really don't. I'm going to pick for my prediction, poor things. And to match what I think, how I'd rank it, poor things, killers, Oppenheimer, Barbie, Napoleon for production design. Animated short film, haven't seen him. Live action short film, haven't seen him. Sound, Oppenheimer. I I mean, you, you got to give... Though... The Zone of Interest, had, it did some really cool stuff with sound. Personally, I would go that. But I think with, with people on the board, it's just like, if you're not sure, you go Oppenheimer. I haven't seen a lot of these films. Pretty much most. Uh, I haven't seen Godzilla Minus One. I really want to see it. 
and it would be cool if that one visual effects. For writing, I predict that Oppenheimer is going to win here because I think people really, they, they're going to want to award this uh, and really give it its flowers. I had a lot of trouble with adapted screenplay. I've actually kind of tossed and turned as to what I personally think. And I'm kind of coming to my conclusion now. I, the more I think about it, the more I really like the zone of interest. I, I think it might be the best screenplay. From there, I think I got to go poor things, then Oppenheimer, American Fiction, and Barbie. And that's my personal ranking for this. Original screenplay is really tight for a different reason. I think, quite frankly, there's two amazing scripts. Then the third is pretty much locked in there. And then the last two, it's really, it's like the last three, it's completely locked. But the first two, I could argue either way. My prediction is I think the holdovers is going to get its love here. How I would rank it, I think Anatomy of a Fall by a Hair over Holdovers, then without a shadow of a doubt, Past Lives, and then May, December, Maestro. I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully you guys make some money like me on this. Let me know where I'm wrong down below, and uh, I'll catch you on the flippity-floop. Bye, y'all.